Ever since prehistoric times, artists have depicted movement. Doing so has represented a challenge, calling on all the traditional skills. A logical development is for artists to introduce actual movement in their work. It is no less a challenge in this age, calling for new skills and new materials. In the winged victory, the sculptor has frozen the movement of the drapery as it sweeps across the body. Much later, Boccioni's unique form of continuity in space shows the movements of walking. This is linear construction in space by Gabo, who prophesied in the Constructivist Manifesto of 1920 that actual movement should become a new element in art. One simple form of movement can be created optically. Two sets of shapes interact as the spectator passes. These three works are by Soto, who was born in Venezuela. Another Venezuelan, Cruz Diaz, works with a slightly different method. The angle of view governs the change. This is a method which has been used before, as in this 17th century mortality portrait of Mary, Queen of Scots. Yakov Agam offers the spectator himself a chance to move the parts of the picture. A pattern may be created within the limits set by the artist. Radio Guide Tours gave visitors a chance to hear several artists comment on the work which they had contributed to the exhibition. Another pioneer of movement is the American Alexander Calder. His interest began in Paris in 1926. He first used motors but discarded them for freely balanced mobiles, a word specially invented by Marcel Duchamp. Calder's delicate constructions depend on a breeze or a touch by hand to set them in motion. The French woman, Marta Pan, also uses this method. In her equilibre, the large bronze sculpture is balanced on one tiny point. These are signals made by the Greek sculptor Tachys. A gentle touch sends them swaying to take part in a nervous, quivering conversation. Tachys was born in Athens in 1925. His large tableau was made in 1964. The cones are held suspended over the white canvas like strange spacecraft caught in a lunar gravity. In Tachys Ballet Magnetique, the objects perform to the rhythm of an electromagnet. A third source of movement is supplied by machines. Velasquez records the blur created by the rotating spokes of a spinning wheel. Similarly, Marcel Duchamp 
spins five glass blades. The properties of polarized light are used by Marcello Salvadori in his Eclipse. which also uses rotating filters, and the Eclipse were both made in 1964. The Aerial Tower by Harry Kramer seems to epitomize the fascination which machines hold for men. It is not even necessary for the machine to be doing anything useful. One of the first Englishmen to use movement is Kenneth Martin. Previously, he was a painter, but in 1951, he began to make mobile constructions. He creates rotating works composed of twists about twists, which he states are related to mathematical thought, although they are not the product of mathematical equations. David Medalla comes from the Philippines. It is perhaps not surprising to discover his interest in natural materials. While the plough moves on, the patterns change as the sand itself trickles away. Medalla has also experimented with bubbles. This work is called Cloud Canyons. The bubbles are pumped out to form glistening, changing natural forms. Many artists know only a little of science, but Frank Molina is a scientist of considerable achievement. In his pictures, shapes and colors change. Molina, seen on the left, visited the exhibition. He talked of the exciting developments which are yet to take place. It may be that movement will emerge as the 20th century's unique contribution to art. 